This is Jack and Ori Jr. Hello, I'm Angela, and this is the story of a little girl called Mira Morris. It's about what happened on her first day at school when she met the monster Crisp Guzzler. This is me, Mira Morris, and this is Miss Porter, my teacher. She looks quite ordinary, doesn't she? But she's not. Not a bit of it. She has a secret. And I know what it is. On my very first day at my new school, I sat next to Hannah, who was very friendly. So what's Miss Porter like? I whispered. Hannah looked around. She's great, Hannah replied. But watch out. Sometimes she can be a bit of a dragon. <laughs> and for some reason, Hannah and Josie and Nicole and all the others around me Burst out laughing. Uh, what's so funny? Miss Porter called across the classroom. Nothing! The laughter stopped at once. <laughs> Hannah, Josie, Nicole and I sat at our table just as the mid-morning bell sounded. Yippee! It was time to get out our break boxes and I was starving. <sighs> oh no! Hannah exclaimed. You've got crisps! Hide them! Hide them! Josie urged. Well, what's the matter? I asked. But I didn't get any further. Miss Porter suddenly sprang to her feet, eyes wide and staring. Josie tried to snatch my crisps out of my hand, but I snatched them back. Uh, excuse me, I said. If you want a crisp, ask first. I don't want your crisps, but the monster crisp guzzler does, Josie told me. The who? Me. Miss Porter appeared from nowhere to squat down beside my chair. It's just a little nickname my class has for me. They call me the Monster Crisp Guzzler because I love crisps so much. The whole class gasped in horror. You don't mind if I have one crisp, do you, Mira? Asked Miss Porter. I shook my head slowly. No, Miss Porter. I really am a monster crisp guzzler, I'm afraid, laughed Miss Porter. And she popped the crisps into her mouth. And then it happened. Not just her face, but her whole body began to change. She grew crinkly and wrinkly and she started sprouting scales all over her arms and her legs and her face. Her ears grew up and her nose grew out and her teeth grew down and enormous wings appeared from nowhere. And she had the longest tail I've ever seen on any creature. Delicious! She licked her lips. Can I have a couple more? I was staring so hard that my eyes were beginning to hurt. Miss Porter wasn't a woman anymore. My teacher had turned into a dragon. Mira, we warned you not to give her any crisps, Nicole snapped. This is what happens every time Miss Porter eats them. I didn't know whether to scream or to burst out laughing. I pulled my chair away from Miss Porter the dragon. I hardly dared to breathe. Suppose that when she was a dragon, she turned into a... A girl eater. It's okay, Mira, I'm not going to hurt you, I promise, Miss Porter told me. I can't help being a dragon. Well, you wouldn't be one if you could stop eating crisps, Hannah pointed out. Um, how, uh, how long are you going to stay a dragon, Miss Porter? I asked. Miss Porter shrugged her dragon shoulders. No idea. It might just be five minutes, it might be five hours. I have no way of knowing. Quick, Miss Porter, hide! The headmistress is coming! yelped Barry from the door. Oh dear, if Mrs Spratt catches me like this, she will sack me for sure! Miss Porter looked around desperately for somewhere to hide. Barry hurried back to his desk, 
only just in time. The door was flung open and there stood Mrs Spratt. Where's Miss Porter? She asked no one in particular. Er, uh, she just stepped out for a moment, Hannah replied. Stepped out where? asked the headmistress. She didn't say, Hannah rushed on. Sorry. I had to fight to look at Mrs Spratt and not at what was going on above her. Miss Porter was floating right above her head. She placed one finger over her scaly lips as she signalled to us not to give the game away. Well, she shouldn't leave you alone. I'll go and find her immediately. If she comes back, could one of you tell her I'd like to have a word with her? said Mrs Spratt. We all nodded. Mrs Spratt left the classroom. Miss Porter floated down from above the door, her tail uncurling. That had been too close. Thanks for not giving the game away, class, Miss Porter began. I really thought that... Oh, class, could you tell... Mrs Spratt entered the room and stared at Miss Porter the dragon. I held my breath. What was going to happen now? Miss Porter, I warned you what would happen if you turned into a dragon in my school again, said Mrs Spratt. You will work till the end of this week until I can find someone to replace you. After that, you will no longer be welcome at my school. You are dismissed. Mrs Spratt slammed out of the classroom. We all stared in horror. Just like that, Miss Porter had lost her job. And I felt worse than anyone because it was all my fault. The rest of the week flew by, and we didn't want it to. Even the prospect of a school trip to Ramsden Bay by the seaside on Friday couldn't cheer us up. Everyone was very aware that Friday was going to be our last day with Miss Porter. We got a surprise when we all climbed into the coach on Friday morning. Mrs Spratt, the headmistress, was our driver. I've decided to come with you to make sure that none of you... She turned to glare at Miss Porter as she said it. None of you gets up to any mischief. And with that, we set off. When we got to Ramsden Bay, the beach and the sea couldn't have been more perfect. But I wasn't the only one moping around. Cheer up, class! Miss Porter tried her best to make us smile. She pulled silly faces and tried to juggle with some shells and seaweed. We did laugh, especially when a long smelly piece of seaweed fell on Miss Porter's head. But it didn't last long. This was our very last day with our teacher. I was going to miss her. Oh, if only there was something we could do to change Mrs Spratt's mind, I said to my new friends. We walked along the beach, looking in rock pools and watching crabs and starfish. We ate our lunch and we made sandcastles until all too soon it was time to go home. Back in the coach, I looked around for my lunchbox. Oh, no! I exclaimed. Uh, Miss Porter! Uh, Miss Porter, I've left my lunchbox over by the last rock pool that we were studying. I, I can see the rock pool from here. Can I go and get it, please? Hurry up, then, said Miss Porter. Go straight there and come straight back. As I got out of the coach, I could see the white, foamy crest of the sea breaking on the beach. I ran all the way to the rock pool where I'd left my box. But it wasn't there. In the distance, I could see a big seagull dragging it along the beach. That's mine! I cried out and started running after it. When at last I reached it, I picked it up and I dusted off the sand. I turned around and screamed. The tide, which had seemed so gentle and far away before, was now racing up the beach like a galloping horse. And it was only a few metres away. I turned and ran, jumping up onto first one rock, then the next one higher up, then the next. The tide crashed around the group of rocks I was standing on and carried on heading up the beach. I screamed again. All around me, the water was getting higher and higher. In the distance, I could see some of my classmates pointing at me from the coach. 
Miss Porter jumped out of the coat and came racing towards me. Mrs. Spratt and all the others poured out of the coat and sprinted behind her. Help! Someone help! I yelled. I'll get her, said Mrs. Spratt, and she pulled off her jacket and kicked off her shoes. Miss Porter pulled her back. The tide is too fast and the current is too strong. You'd be swept away before you'd even reached her. Do something, help! I screamed. The water was lashing higher up the rocks. Does anyone have any crisps? Miss Porter called out suddenly. No. Everyone shook their heads. I'll get you some, Mrs Spratt said. She lifted up her long flowery skirt and sprinted down the beach towards the gift shop. And all the time the seawater around me was rising and rising and rising. Only a couple more centimetres and then it would reach me. Mrs Spratt came racing back towards us, her arms full of crisp packets. Miss Porter grabbed the nearest one and tore it open. Tilting her head back, she let the crisps fall into her mouth. <laughs> Hurry! I shouted. The sea charged against the rocks I was standing on, spraying up onto my socks and skirt. But as I watched, Miss Porter's shoulders began to heave up and down. She rubbed her growing nose. Wings sprouted out of her back. The longest tail of any animal anywhere began to whip up and down behind her. Quick! I yelled. Wasting no more time, Miss Porter flew over to me and lowered her tail. Mira, grab hold, quick, she said. She didn't need to tell me twice. I jumped up and I grabbed hold of her tail, and only just in time too. The tide crashed over the rocks where I'd been standing only a second before. I held on tight as we flew over the sea. Miss Porter's tail was very warm, but scaly and rough, which was just as well, because if it had been smooth, I'd have slid right off into the sea below. Miss Porter flew further up the beach to where it was safe. She made sure my feet were on the ground before she landed herself. Hooray for Miss Porter, the class cheered. <gasps> Mrs Spratt, wasn't Miss Porter wonderful? Asked Hannah hopefully. Yeah, yeah, she was. Mrs Spratt smiled at Hannah before turning to Miss Porter. Perhaps I was rather too hasty in telling you to leave. You may have your job back, but only if you behave yourself. All right, no more turning into a dragon during school hours. No more crisps, promise? I promise, said Miss Porter, adding under her breath. I promise I'll try. <gasps> Miss Porter, can I have a ride, please? Barry pleaded. Um, I don't think Mrs Spratt would be too happy about that, said Miss Porter. Well, we've got about 30 minutes before we have to set off, so why not? Mrs Spratt surprised us all by saying. Miss Porter gave everyone in the class a ride on her back, over the sea and along the beach, until the crisps wore off and she turned back into our teacher. By the time we got back to the coach, we'd all had the most wonderful time ever. We sang songs all the way home. Even Mrs Spratt joined in. It was terrific. I didn't mind getting wet if it meant Miss Porter could still be our teacher. Miss Porter had a secret that only the others in my class and the headmistress knew. And that was the way it was going to stay. So, watch out for crisp, guzzling teachers, won't you? See you later. Come and follow me for a plod, plod, plod with Big Bear and Little Bear. Come on, Little Bear, said Big Bear. I thought I heard something Little Bear said. Plod, plod, plod. I think it's a plodder. Follow us into the world of Big Bear and Little Bear, Friday at 5.45 on CBeebies.